History of Latin America, Wikipedia Audio The term Latin America primarily refers to the Spanish and Portuguese-speaking countries in the New World. Before the arrival of Europeans in the late 15th and early 16th centuries, the region was home to many indigenous peoples, a number of which had advanced civilizations, most notably from north to south, the Almec, Maya, Muisca, and Inca. The region came under control of the crowns of Spain and Portugal, which imposed both Roman Catholicism and their respective languages. Both the Spanish and the Portuguese brought African slaves to their colonies, as laborers, particularly in regions where indigenous populations who could be made to work were absent. Origin of the term and definition In the early 19th century nearly all of areas of Spanish America attained independence by armed struggle, with the exceptions of Cuba and Puerto Rico. Brazil, which had become a monarchy separate from Portugal, became a republic in the late 19th century. Political independence from European monarchies did not result in the abolition of black slavery in the new sovereign nations. Political independence resulted in political and economic instability in Spanish America immediately after independence. Great Britain and the United States exercised significant influence in the post-independence era, resulting in a form of neocolonialism, whereby a country's political sovereignty remained in place, but foreign powers exercised considerable power in the economic sphere. The idea that a part of the Americas has a cultural or racial affinity with all Romance cultures can be traced back to the 1830s, in particular in the writing of the French Saint-Simonian Michel Chevalier, who postulated that this part of the Americas were inhabited by people of a Latin race, and that it could, therefore, ally itself with Latin Europe in a struggle with Teutonic Europe, Anglo-Saxon America and Slavic Europe. The idea was later taken up by Latin American intellectuals and political leaders of the mid and late 19th century, who no longer looked to Spain or Portugal as cultural models, but rather to France. The actual term Latin America was coined in France under Napoleon III and played a role in his campaign to imply cultural kinship with France, transform France into a cultural and political leader of the area and install Maximilian as Emperor of Mexico. Apache, Comanche, Coahuiltecan Cacopa, Pima, Pueblon peoples, Navajo, Quechan. In the mid-20th century, especially in the United States, there was a trend to occasionally classify all of the territory south of the United States as Latin America, especially when the discussion focused on its contemporary political and economic relations to the rest of the world rather than solely on its cultural aspects. Concurrently, there has been a move to avoid this oversimplification by talking about Latin America and the Caribbean, as in the United Nations Geoscheme. Since, the concept and definitions of Latin American are very modern, going back only to the 19th century, it is anachronistic to talk about a history of Latin America before the arrival of the Europeans. Nevertheless, the many and varied cultures that did exist in the pre-Columbian period had a strong and direct influence on the societies that emerged as a result of the conquest, and therefore, they cannot be overlooked. They are introduced in the next section. What is now Latin America has been populated for several millennia, possibly for as long as 30,000 years. There are many models of migration to the New World. Precise dating of many of the early civilizations is difficult because there are few text sources. However, highly developed civilizations flourished at various times and places, such as in the Andes and Mesoamerica.
Christopher Columbus landed in the Americas in 1492. Subsequently, the major sea powers in Europe sent expeditions to the New World to build trade networks and colonies and to convert the native peoples to Christianity. Spain concentrated on building its empire on the central and southern parts of the Americas allotted to it by the Treaty of Tordesillas, because of presence of large, settled societies like the Aztec, the Inca, the Maya and the Muisca, whose human and material resources it could exploit, and large concentrations of silver and gold. The Portuguese built their empire in Brazil, which fell in their sphere of influence owing to the Treaty of Tordesillas, by developing the land for sugar production since there was a lack of a large, complex society or mineral resources. During the European colonization of the Western Hemisphere, most of the native population died, mainly by disease. In what has come to be known as the Columbian Exchange, diseases such as smallpox and measles decimated populations with no immunity. The size of the indigenous populations has been studied in the modern era by historians, but Dominican friar Bartolomé de las Casas raised the alarm in the earliest days of Spanish settlement in the Caribbean in his A Short Account of the Destruction of the Indies. Caxcan, Guachiquil, Guamare, Shishimika Janas, Cora, Huicol, Mayos, Otomi, Oatom, Pame, Tecuxi, Tapihuans, Yaquis, Zacatico. Because the Spanish were now in power, native culture and religion were forbidden. The Spanish even went as far as burning the Maya codices. These codices contained information about astrology, religion, gods, and rituals. There are four codices known to exist today, these are the Dresden Codex, Paris Codex, Madrid Codex, and High Codex. The Spanish crown regulated immigration to its overseas colonies, with travelers required to register with the House of Trade in Seville. Since the Crown wished to exclude anyone who was non-Christian passing as Christian, travellers' backgrounds were vetted. The ability to regulate the flow of people enabled the Spanish Crown to keep a grip on the religious purity of its overseas empire. The Spanish Crown was rigorous in their attempt to allow only Christians passage to the New World and required proof of religion by way of personal testimonies. Specific examples of individuals dealing with the crown allow for an understanding of how religion affected passage into the New World. Aztec, Huastec, Mistec, Maya, Almec, Papil, Tarascan, Teotihuacan, Toltec, Totonac, Zapotec. The Pre-Columbian Period Francisca de Figueroa an African Iberian woman seeking entrance into the Americas, petitioned the Spanish crown in 1600 in order to gain a license to sail to Cartagena. On her behalf she had a witness attest to her religious purity, Elvira de Medina wrote, This witness knows that she and parents and her grandparents have been and are old Christians and of unsullied caste and lineage. They are not of Moorish or Jewish caste or of those recently converted to our holy Catholic faith. Despite Francisca's race, she was allowed entrance into the Americas in 1601 when a decree from His Majesty was presented, it read, My presidents and official judges of the case de contraction of Seville. I order you to allow passage to the province of Cartagena for Francisca de Figueroa. This example points to the importance of religion when attempting to travel to the Americas during colonial times. Individuals had to work within the guidelines of Christianity in order to appeal to the crown and be granted access to travel. Once in the New World, religion was still a prevalent issue which had to be considered in everyday life. 
Many of the laws were based in religious beliefs and traditions and often these laws clashed with the many other cultures throughout colonial Latin America. One of the central clashes was between African and Iberian cultures, this difference in culture resulted in the aggressive prosecution of witches, both African and Iberian, throughout Latin America. According to European tradition which a bruja was thought to reject God and the sacraments and instead worship the devil and observe the witches' Sabbath. This rejection of God was seen as an abomination and was not tolerated by the authorities either in Spain nor Latin America. A specific example, the trial of Paula de Igalaz, shows how an appeal to Christianity can help to lessen punishment even in the case of a witch trial. Paula de Igalaz was a woman of African descent who was born in Santo Domingo and grew up as a slave. Sometime in her youth she learned the trade of witches and was publicly known to be a sorceress. In 1623, Paula was accused of witchcraft, divination, and apostasy. Paula was tried in 1624 and began her hearings without much knowledge of the Crown's way of conducting legal proceedings. There needed to be appeals to Christianity and announcements of faith if an individual hoped to lessen the sentence. Learning quickly, Paula correctly recited the Lord's Prayer, the Creed, the Salve Regina, and the Ten Commandments before the second hearing of her trial. Finally, in the third hearing of the trial Paula ended her testimony by ask our Lord to forgive for these dreadful sins and errors and requests. A merciful punishment. The appeals to Christianity and profession of faith allowed Paula to return to her previous life as a slave with minimal punishment. The Spanish crown placed a high importance on the preservation of Christianity in Latin America, this preservation of Christianity allowed colonialism to rule Latin America for over 300 years. Following the model of the U.S. and French revolutions, most of Latin America achieved its independence by 1825. Independence destroyed the old common market that existed under the Spanish Empire after the Bourbon reforms and created an increased dependence on the financial investment provided by nations which had already begun to industrialize, therefore, Western European powers in particular Great Britain and France, and the United States began to play major roles, since the region became economically dependent on these nations. Independence also created a new, self-consciously Latin American ruling class and intelligentsia which at times avoided Spanish and Portuguese models in their quest to reshape their societies. This elite looked towards other Catholic European models in particular France for a new Latin American culture, but did not seek input from indigenous peoples. The failed efforts in Spanish America to keep together most of the initial large states that emerged from independence Gran Colombia, the Federal Republic of Central America and the United Provinces of South America resulted a number of domestic and interstate conflicts which plagued the new countries. Brazil, in contrast to its Hispanic neighbors, remained a united monarchy and avoided the problem of civil and interstate wars. Domestic wars were often fights between federalists and centrists who ended up asserted themselves through the military repression of their opponents at the expense of civilian political life. The new nations inherited the cultural diversity of the colonial era and strived to create a new identity based around the shared European language and culture. Within each country, however, there were cultural and class divisions that created tension and hurt national unity. For the next few decades there was a long process to create a sense of nationality. Most of the new national borders were created around the often centuries-old Audiencia jurisdictions or the Bourbon Intendancies, which had become areas of political identity. In many areas the borders were unstable, 
since the new states fought wars with each other to gain access to resources, especially in the second half of the 19th century. The more important conflicts were the Paraguayan War and the War of the Pacific. The Paraguayan War pitted Argentina, Brazil and Uruguay against Paraguay, which was utterly defeated. As a result, Paraguay suffered a demographic collapse, the population went from an estimated 525,000 persons in 1,864 to 221,000 in 1,871 and out of this last population, only around 28,000 were men. In the War of the Pacific, Chile defeated the combined forces of Bolivia and Peru. Chile gained control of saltpeter rich areas, previously controlled by Peru and Bolivia, and Bolivia became a landlocked nation. By mid century, the region also confronted a growing United States, seeking to expand on the North American continent and extend its influence in the hemisphere. In Mexican American War, Mexico lost over half of its territory to the United States. In the 1860s France attempted to indirectly control Mexico. In South America, Brazil consolidated its control of large swaths of the Amazon basin at the expense of its neighbors. In the 1880s the United States implemented an aggressive policy to defend and expand its political and economic interests in all of Latin America, which culminated in the creation of the Pan American Conference the successful completion of the Panama Canal and the United States intervention in the final Cuban War of Independence. The export of natural resources provided the basis of most Latin American economies in the 19th century, which allowed for the development of wealthy elite. The restructuring of colonial economic and political realities resulted in a sizable gap between rich and poor with landed elites controlling the vast majority of land and resources. In Brazil, for instance, by 1910 85% of the land belonged to 1% of the population. Gold mining and fruit growing, in particular, were monopolized by these wealthy landowners. These great owners completely controlled local activity and, furthermore, were the principal employers and the main source of wages. This led to a society of peasants whose connection to larger political realities remained in thrall to farming and mining magnates. Colonial Era Colonial Era Religion The endemic political instability and the nature of the economy resulted in the emergence of caudillos, military chiefs whose hold on power depended on their military skill and ability to dispense patronage. The political regimes were at least in theory democratic and took the form of either presidential or parliamentary governments. Both were prone to being taken over by a caudillo or an oligarchy. The political landscape was occupied by conservatives who believed that the preservation of the old social hierarchies served as the best guarantee of national stability and prosperity, and liberals, who sought to bring about progress by freeing up the economy and individual initiative. Popular insurrections were often influential and repressed, 100,000 were killed during the suppression of a Colombian revolt between 1899 and 1902 during the Thousand Days War. Some states did manage to have some of democracy, Uruguay, and partially Argentina, Chile, Costa Rica, and Colombia. The others were clearly oligarchist or authoritarian although these oligarchs and caudillos sometimes enjoyed support from a majority in the population. All of these regimes sought to maintain Latin America's lucrative position in the world economy as a provider of raw materials. Arawak, Chavan, Chibcha, Chimer, Chachapoya, Hwari, Inca, Island Carib, Kalina, Mapush, Moshe, 
Nazca, Tarana, Tiwanaku. Traveling to the New World Religion in Latin America 19th Century Revolutions, the Post-Colonial Era 20th Century 1900-1929 By the start of the century, the United States continued its interventionist attitude, which aimed to directly defend its interests in the region. This was officially articulated in Theodore Roosevelt's Big Stick Doctrine, which modified the Old Monroe Doctrine, which had simply aimed to deter European intervention in the hemisphere. At the conclusion of the Spanish-American War the new government of Cuba and the United States signed the Platt Amendment in 1902, which authorized the United States to intervene in Cuban affairs when the United States deemed necessary. In Colombia, United States sought the concession of a territory in Panama to build a much-anticipated canal across the Isthmus. The Colombian government opposed this, but a Panamanian insurrection provided the United States with an opportunity. The United States backed Panamanian independence and the new nation granted the concession. These were not the only interventions carried out in the region by the United States. In the first decades of the 20th century, there were several military incursions into Central America and the Caribbean, mostly in defense of commercial interests, which became known as the Banana Wars. The greatest political upheaval in the second decade of the century took place in Mexico. In 1908, President Porfirio Diaz, who had been in office since 1884, promised that he would step down in 1910. Francisco I. Madero, a moderate liberal whose aim was to modernize the country while preventing a socialist revolution, launched an election campaign in 1910. Diaz, however, changed his mind and ran for office once more. Madero was arrested on election day and Diaz declared the winner. These events provoked uprisings, which became the start of the Mexican Revolution. Revolutionary movements were organized and some key leaders appeared, Pancho Villa in the north, Emiliano Zapata in the south, and Madero in Mexico City. Madero's forces defeated the Federal Army in early 1911, assumed temporary control of the government and won a second election later on November 6, 1911. Madero undertook moderate reforms to implement greater democracy in the political system but failed to satisfy many of the regional leaders in what had become a revolutionary situation. Madero's failure to address agrarian claims led Zapata to break with Madero and resume the revolution. On February 18, 1913 Victoriano Huerta, a conservative general organized a coup d'état with the support of the United States, Madero was killed four days later. Other revolutionary leaders such as Villa, Zapata, and Venustiano Carranza continued to militarily oppose the federal government, now under Huerta's control. Allies Zapata and Villa took Mexico City in March 1914, but found themselves outside of their elements in the capital and withdrew to their respective bastions. This allowed Carranza to assume control of the central government. He then organized the repression of the rebel armies of Villa and Zapata, led in particular by General Alvaro Obregón. The Mexican Constitution of 1917, still the current constitution, was proclaimed but initially little enforced. The efforts against the other revolutionary leaders continued. Zapata was assassinated on April 10, 1919. Carranza himself was assassinated on May 15, 1920, leaving Obregón in power, who was officially elected president later that year. Finally in 1923 Villa was also assassinated. <laughs>
with the removal of the main rivals Obregón is able to consolidate power and relative peace return to Mexico. Under the Constitution a liberal government is implemented but some of the aspirations of the working and rural classes remained unfulfilled. Sports became increasingly popular, drawing enthusiastic fans to large stadia. The International Olympic Committee worked to encourage Olympic ideals and participation. Following the 1922 Latin American Games in Rio de Janeiro, the IOC helped to establish national Olympic committees and prepare for future competition. In Brazil, however, sporting and political rivalries slowed progress as opposing factions fought to control of international sport. The 1924 Summer Olympics in Paris and the 1928 Summer Olympics Games in Amsterdam saw greatly increased participation from Latin American athletes. English and Scottish engineers brought Feudibal to Brazil in the late 1800s. The International Committee of the YMCA of North America and the Playground Association of America played major roles in training coaches. Sports The Great Depression posed a great challenge to the region. The collapse of the world economy meant that the demand for raw materials drastically declined, undermining many of the economies of Latin America. Intellectuals and government leaders in Latin America turned their backs on the older economic policies and turned toward import substitution industrialization. The goal was to create self-sufficient economies, which would have their own industrial sectors and large middle classes and which would be immune to the ups and downs of the global economy. Despite the potential threats to United States commercial interests, the Roosevelt administration understood that the United States could not wholly oppose import substitution. Roosevelt implemented a good neighbor policy and allowed the nationalization of some American companies in Latin America. Mexican President Lazaro Cardenas nationalized American oil companies, out of which he created Pemex. Cardenas also oversaw the redistribution of a quantity of land, fulfilling the hopes of many since the start of the Mexican Revolution. The Platt Amendment was also repealed, freeing Cuba from legal and official interference of the United States in its politics. The Second World War also brought the United States and most Latin American nations together. In the post-war period, the expansion of communism became the greatest political issue for both the United States and governments in the region. The start of the Cold War forced governments to choose between the United States and the Soviet Union. Following the 1948 Costa Rica Civil War, the nation established a new constitution and was recognized as the first legitimate democracy in Latin America however, the new Costa Rican government, which now was constitutionally required to ban the presence of a standing military, did not seek regional influence and was distracted further by conflicts with neighboring Nicaragua. Several socialist and communist insurgencies broke out in Latin America throughout the entire 20th century, but the most successful one was in Cuba. The Cuban Revolution was led by Fidel Castro against the regime of Fulgencio Batista, who since 1933 was the principal autocrat in Cuba. Since the 1860s the Cuban economy had focused on the cultivation of sugar, of which 82% was sold in the American market by the 20th century. Despite the repeal of the Platt Amendment, the United States still had considerable influence in Cuba, both in politics and in everyday life. In fact Cuba had a reputation of being the brothel of the United States, a place where Americans could find all sorts of licit and illicit pleasures, provided they had the cash. Despite having the socially advanced constitution of 1940, 
Cuba was plagued with corruption and the interruption of constitutional rule by autocrats like Batista. Batista began his final turn as the head of the government in a 1952 coup. The coalition that formed under the revolutionaries hoped to restore the constitution, re-establish a democratic state and free Cuba from the American influence. The revolutionaries succeeded in toppling Batista on January 1, 1959. Castro, who initially declared himself as a non-socialist, initiated a program of agrarian reforms and nationalizations in May 1959, which alienated the Eisenhower administration and resulted in the United States' breaking of diplomatic relations freezing Cuban assets in the United States and placing an embargo on the nation in 1960. The Kennedy administration authorized the funding and support of an invasion of Cuba by exiles. The invasion failed and radicalized the revolutionary government's position. Cuba officially proclaimed itself socialist and openly became an ally of the Soviet Union. The military collaboration between Cuba and the Soviet Union, which included the placement of intercontinental ballistic missiles in Cuba precipitated the Cuban Missile Crisis of October 1962. By the 1970s, leftists had acquired a significant political influence which prompted the right wing, ecclesiastical authorities and a large portion of each individual country's upper class to support coups d'état to avoid what they perceived as a communist threat. This was further fueled by Cuban and United States intervention which led to a political polarization. Most South American countries were in some periods ruled by military dictatorships that were supported by the United States of America. Around the 1970s, the regimes of the Southern Cone collaborated in Operation Condor killing many leftist dissidents, including some urban guerrillas. The set of specific economic policy prescriptions that were considered the standard reform package were promoted for crisis-racked developing countries by Washington, D.C.-based institutions such as the International Monetary Fund, World Bank and the U.S. Treasury Department during the 1980s and 90s. In recent years, several Latin American countries led by socialist or other left-wing governments including Argentina and Venezuela have campaigned for policies contrary to the Washington Consensus set of policies also critical of the policies as actually promoted by the International Monetary Fund have been some U.S. economists, such as Joseph Stiglitz and Danny Roderick, who have challenged what are sometimes described as the fundamentalist policies of the International Monetary Fund and the U.S. Treasury for what Stiglitz calls a one-size-fits-all treatment of individual economies. The term has become associated with neoliberal policies in general and drawn into the broader debate over the expanding role of the free market, constraints upon the state, and U.S. influence on other countries' national sovereignty. 1930-1960 Since the 20-hundreds, or 1990s in some countries, left-wing political parties have risen to power. Hugo Chávez in Venezuela, Lula da Silva and Dilma Rousseff in Brazil, Fernando Lugo in Paraguay, Nestor and Cristina Kirchner in Argentina, Tabaré Vázquez and José Mujica in Uruguay, the Lagos and Bachelet governments in Chile, Evo Morales in Bolivia, Daniel Ortega in Nicaragua, Manuel Zelaya in Honduras, and Rafael Correa of Ecuador are all part of this wave of left-wing politicians who also often declare themselves socialists, Latin Americanists, or anti-imperialists. The conservative wave is a political phenomenon that emerged in mid-2010 in South America. In Brazil, it began roughly around the time Dilma Rousseff, in a tight election, won the 2014 presidential election, 
kicking off the fourth term of the Workers' Party in the highest position of government. In addition, according to the political analyst of the Inter-Union Department of Parliamentary Advice, Antonio Augusto de Quiras, the National Congress elected in 2014 may be considered the most conservative since the redemocratization movement, noting an increase in the number of parliamentarians linked to more conservative segments, as ruralists, military, police and religious. Late 20th Century Military Regimes and Revolutions the subsequent economic crisis of 2015 and investigations of corruption scandals led to a right-wing movement that sought to rescue ideas from economic liberalism and conservatism in opposition to left-wing policies. Oasis America Washington Consensus 21st Century Turn to the Left Arido America Mesoamerica South America British colonization of the Americas, Danish colonization of the Americas, Dutch colonization of the Americas, New Netherland, French New France, Portuguese, Russian, Spanish, New Spain, Conquistador, Spanish conquest of Yucatan, Spanish conquest of Mexico. Spanish missions in California, Swedish. Turn to the right. Pre Columbian. Colonization. History by region. History by country. Other topics. Historiography. Colonial Era II. Independence Era. Modern Era.